ठीक है हाँ जी जी अनुभव मम्मी Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I see some more people joining, so probably uh, we'll wait for one more minute, and before we start, so. Besides the obvious monetary requirement. uh i believe these statistics speaks for themselves and the need for business to retain customers uh what better way to do this than to make customer loyal to a particular brand uh we have heard about this we have known about this uh and today i'm going to uh, give you a little more insight around how we have made this as a core of our business to give you a background about myself I have been leading Intermiles since last six years, which I'm proud to say India's leading loyalty and rewards management company. After graduating from Pune uh, with the management uh, uh, in marketing in 1996, and went on to begin my career in the direct marketing and advertising industry as a business development and accounts manager for a company called uh, Directions. I uh, subsequently joined uh, uh, Jet Airways. uh in 1999 uh and then in uh, 2014 uh we set up jet privilege uh private limited as an independent uh, company i formed the company and then got uh, jet and and etihad as the strategic partners into it intermiles as you may be aware of is previously known as jet privilege an independent loyalty and rewards program which was also the fit to fire program of jet airways uh till its closure in 2019 in november 2019 jet privilege was rebranded to intermiles which today encompasses both the award winning loyalty and uh uh reward program with the ubiquitous reward and recognition currency an everyday lifestyle reward and uh, loyalty platform offering customized experience values personalization and convenience to every member uh, we have close to around 10 million members uh, in our base intermiles as we self and position ourselves as the new age currency of engagement uh, the keyword being the operative keyword being currency of engagement across travel hospitality lifestyle and several other categories in total about 10 plus odd categories and we work with about 150 plus program partners what began what sorry what began as a free to fire program has today become a platform of choice that enables members travel and lifestyle aspiration uh and today uh, i'm going to be speaking about our journey and uh, hopefully give you some insight around what makes the program tick and why uh, brands need to look at loyalty programs or customer engagement and how do we go about defining them so uh if we remove all the frills and fancy words marketers used to define their roles in brand uh business life cycle marketing would boil down to one very core basic fundamental function and that is customer engagement and i firmly believe if you actually look at the way the industrial uh, revolution has happened uh it started off somewhere in 1800s uh, with the digital revolution and the, and the way uh, industries have evolved uh time for uh customer engagement and customer being truly in the center uh has now actually been coming purely because it is the data which empowers a lot of decisions and customers who generate this data and data about customers becomes so imperative and those brands and companies who will have this power will be the one who will define success going forward uh an engaged customer ultimately ends up transacting more with brand over a longer relationship period it may seem easy but customer engagement especially uh in a world like ours with high uh, 
with highly aware and demanding consumers. Uh, cutthroat competition and significant rapid technological advancement is possible uh, one of the most challenging business functions. And, and it is uh, indeed uh, easy, to un easy to talk about it, but the most difficult part to actually bring together. It draws nearly all elements of uh, uh, the organization, whether it is marketing, branding, sales, IT, HR, communication, data analytics, R&D, uh, and if it is uh, spread across any other organization, uh, it, it involves several other functions uh, together. One of the most crucial vertical of customer engagement, in my opinion, is loyalty and reward recognition program. And the funda is very simple. A customer who is rewarded for his or her engagement with the brand uh, feels significantly recognized and cherished for being loyal to a brand will always veer towards uh, the brand above all other others. And the bond that goes deeper than one-off transaction and also escalates into brand advocacy, uh, word of mouth promotion by customers. Loyalty programs are hence the ultimate impactful customer engagement tool uh, or uh, in some cases strategy. You may pick across the world, uh, high-end, luxury, budget, mass, they all have some form of customer engagement strategy and some sort of a tool to reward and recognize and incentivize customers to a purchase behavior which is more uh, inclined towards the uh, company's objective. In this context, uh, how do we look at customer loyalty? It is the degree to which the customer experiences positive feeling uh, for and exhibits positive behavior. So the, the feeling and the behavior element is equally important for the company. As well as the behavioral component of loyalty are two critical components. You can, you can measure it, you can manage it, you can uh, uh, track it, and you can create and more appropriately. Measure of customer engagement are simply the measure of customer loyalty to some extent. And I, and I have a very clear way to look at customer engagement. It is not around the way how many likes you have got on your social media or how many followers you have, uh, which is a typical way some of those uh, brands would define customer engagement. For us, it is much deeper meaning. And therefore, uh, while defining customer engagement is fairly straightforward uh, and the extent of customer willingness to invest in her discretionary time uh, with a company for mutual benefit, the purpose or the measure of engagement includes several aspects, which is referrals, uh, references, participating in product uh, surveys or, or the strategy or the advisory board speaking uh, and advocating the company uh, philosophy. Those do not measure customer engagement as defined. They are simply measure of customer loyalty and, and therefore the positive behavior towards the company is equally important. And there are many companies in their evolution uh, define or uh, create a different types of loyalty program. And this could vary depending on the nature of the industry, the evolution of the company and the product and services which are there. In a very simple way, if one can look at it, um, in a modern business, the level of competition is quite high. So uh, a lot of times, the, the, for easy reference, uh, we look at, uh, what is true loyalty and what is cult loyalty, uh, inertia uh, and mercenary. There, is, there are different stages in which loyalty can be expressed and, as, and depending on the customer segment, uh, uh, the need and the industry, 
different types of loyalty programs can be constructed. Uh, so every company seeks to attract the loyal customers to ensure their success. Information about the degree of customer loyalty is an indicator uh, as to how well or poorly the enterprise meets the needs of the customer. For a long-term relationship with the, with the consumer, together with an increased volume of transaction and their frequency, and, and some of you may have read about the RFM concept, which is the recency, frequency, and monetary aspect about the customers, uh, which is used sometimes to segment, sometimes to score, sometimes to analyze and create different cohorts. And, and ultimately, you look at some amount of data on which you analyze this and different elements uh, emerge and that's where you start to understand to say what sort of loyalty program you would like to look at it those who are uh, frequently purchasing and those who are frequently interacting those who have uh, those the the average transaction between the two transaction average time between the two transaction is the least and such other behavior and the average value of the transaction or the average monthly spend or interaction with the brand is X. That set comes part as, as the cohort becomes one segment. Now, what do you do with them and what kind of loyalty program and reward and incentive you apply is different from somebody with different variables. So, uh, therefore, choosing a strategy of forming customer loyalty, it is necessary to determine the type of customer loyalty. The ambiguity of approaches to formation of customer loyalty and the contradiction in distinguishing its types require clarification of the conceptual framework of loyalty marketing. And uh, it is very uh, often um, in, in my discussion with several people, I have realized that uh, what they actually need is something else, uh, but they end up creating a loyalty program. What they require, so, uh, to give you an example, a lot of companies would want to create a loyalty program, but in effect, what they are looking for is just a customer acquisition program uh, and focus is largely on customer acquisition. Uh, for example, do you need a loyalty program for a real estate business? Uh, there, there are different ways in which one can look at what sort of customer engagement you require for a, for a real estate business. How often is purchase behavior uh, being made? And how much is the influence which the brand can have when the purchase decision has to be uh, made? So in that context, the, the, the need of the program and the type of program differs. And therefore, the, 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 the way to approach this particular thing is to understand what is the actual business objective of the uh, business objective of the company see uh, from a from a theoretical knowledge may help to define the outline and the concept of loyalty and rewards program but nothing beats the real world experience to fully understand uh, grasp and implement it into business operation uh, customer loyalty programs have been around for decades where brands would recognize and give token of appreciation to customers who repeatedly choose to do business with them. Now, if you actually look at it, the start of the loyalty program was somewhere uh, with a stamp-based program in, in, a, in a diner in somewhere in the US where you would actually collect stamps and if for every 10 or 12 stamps, the person would get uh, some special gift or some free meal or a free drink or something like that. Now, uh, in the aviation world, it started off somewhere in the 19, uh, in the 1960s or 70s where the intention was largely to understand who the customer is who the uh, what how frequently they are traveling and who they're who the uh, and where they are traveling so the intent was largely from collecting data now somewhere as systems have evolved uh, business objectives have evolved the data was lying in the organizations in different silos and system providers took over the control and created different ways in which loyalty programs can be run. 
the core of it still lies in the data and which is why i was referring to this earlier is that at the end of the day it is about the customer's data and how you re uh, benefits of that customer data and create the engagement with your customers which will define the way forward so if i have to uh, uh, look at it at uh, at a broad level uh, the good reference point for someone looking into a crash course in loyalty programs uh, would be to uh, in my opinion these three or four things will be crucial establishing an emotional connect or bond with the customer uh, going beyond just rewarding purchases and offering discounts addressing the customer need and and understanding the trigger and creating a value in customers life so you need to look at it from the customers point of view to see what is the value which he or she will get not what value you offer but what value he or she will uh, perceive and therefore the perceived value determines a large chunk of the way the loyalty program can be designed and implemented there is a big difference between satisfied and a loyal customer and 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 uh, never never uh, settle for satisfied uh why are businesses uh, struggling to do this simply and straightforwardly put to make money um or revenue in in our in, in our part of the world by selling product or services or experience or delivering uh, whatever the customer is, is looking for money will be made when the business is able to attract customers to purchase them a satisfied customer will interact with the brand positively move forward and uh, with no complaints or feedback but if an engaged customer a loyal customer will return over and over again and therefore that the 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 loop starts to generate money and brands always want to get into that loop because you are assured of certain set of customers who will keep purchasing and therefore you will have to just make sure you service them but you don't have to go and look for new customers and then it comes with certain amount of trust the brand uh, generates with its customers and trust is a most important element and we can have a separate uh, half an hour 40 minute discussion purely on trust uh, we lay a significant importance in trust and the way how we measure trust and define trust in our in our business at the end of the day a uh, loyalty program is playing uh, largely on trust it is the promise that you will get your reward and whenever you want it and to be able to fulfill that promise and maintain it over of so many years is where intermiles has been able to establish that trust with its members come with when jet was there or when jet is even not there so understanding the difference or the confluence between consumers and marketers is is crucial what a question i get asked frequently is why it is important for brands and business to actually understand loyalty and and my simple answer would be customer loyalty may be seen may seem like very obvious terrain uh, that anyone may be able to navigate with ease but there is a lot of thought research innovation and evolution which has happened with, over over time uh, to actually say what is the loyalty program formula and and to be honest i have spent more than two decades uh, in this and i don't see a single formula which will work there are concepts which will work and concepts keep changing because customers habits and behaviors keep changing so you have to keep learning and continuous learning is the only way to ensure that you are relevant and you are engaged with your customers identifying where marketers and consumers are aligned on what loyalty is provides the starting point to kind of put together your strategies and motivate business out them from a marketer's perspective there are four key actions to create and sustain customer loyalty the the quality of the product or service the making customers feel important when purchasing consumers believe uh, in what the brand stands for and offering value for money from a consumer's point of view uh, is also equally important and one needs to look at and try to find a balance between them the consumer's point of view the top four actions for brand and businesses to encourage loyalty are value for money of offerings for brands and businesses quality of product ease of access and convenience 
uh, as well as the overall experience in purchasing uh, from the brand. Is it consistency? Uh, is it consistent or no? So, how can brands keep consumers loyal? Uh, there are different permutation combination of going about this. In my experience of running the loyalty program uh, for many years, there are a few elements that go a long way in creating and sustaining customer loyalty. Uh, one, uh, it is important to create an emotional connect with consumers. Uh, and for me, that's the top post. Uh, if you have got this, you have won half the battle already. And it is the most toughest one to actually crack. It takes time. Uh, it is not something which is you will be able to see it immediately. Why? Purely because, uh, and, and, it's, and why I say it is the most challenging element also, is because patience and time is a rare element. And we'll talk about the time, money, trust, age, equation, how we look at it, things, and how the, the business is evolving. Reward your customers from their loyalty uh, in simple but effective value-centric ways. And customers need to see the value. Uh, today, discounts and cashbacks are the norm. And uh, for customer retention, a lot of times people look at it from an easy way of managing and accounting. But then, then if it's easy, then everybody can do it. Then is the customer loyal to the brand or is the customer loyal to the cashback? It means that if I'm in my in my uh, need, if I'm loyal to 500 cashback, 500 rupee cashback or 100 rupee cashback, tomorrow somebody gives me more than that, I will move towards that. So in a sense the customers are habituated to cashback, but that's not the reflection of true loyalty. Uh, and therefore, this is superficial and narrow outlook towards looking at loyalty. Customers want to be in control of the rewards and they stand to gain from their loyalty towards a particular brand. At best, discounts can drive the first sale, first the acquisition of the customer, but not necessarily uh, the way it is currently being implemented by a lot of brands, and, and some of them have changed post uh, uh, in the in the pandemic period, and we see this changing going forward, would be to look at how to effectively use this as a hook to get the next and the next and the next transaction. And therefore, uh, this can be addressed through uh, rewarding them with loyalty points, which is what we have uh, chosen. Uh, to create an alternate currency for their spending, allowing them to accumulate these points for future use, uh, purchases on different products and services through our partners, and creating an overall aspirational value. In short, uh, let them earn that currency and feel valuable uh, owning that currency. In a way, they can fund the future purchase of their choice and give them the freedom, which means the currency or the engagement has to be fungible in some way or the other. And therefore, it should be like a, a cash, but not necessarily cash. And the emotional connect with that brand then becomes a lot more important element. Becoming part of their lifestyle, uh, more like a habit instead of an action. Uh, results in uh, in creating and accelerating a particular habit. For this, you need to listen to your customers, what they are saying, what they want, what they like, what they dislike. Understand what they need and mold your brand and program to fit uh, the, the need which is there. Uh, brands can create uh, customer wants. Uh, they will entice them for once and perhaps that would be the start and the finish of the brand to customer relationship. But the brand that caters to customers need, uh, and, and the why I say that a lot of times, a lot of uh, growth hacks come where you actually create want, but uh, it will serve a purpose, uh, but you will not get the, the continuous engagement. Having said that, the, the need is to invest in a relationship which is for longer and deeper and meaningful with the customer. And it evolves. Uh, and the brand and the program also has to evolve. When we started off uh, with loyalty program, with a particular design way back in 1990s to now, things have evolved. 
We have also changed the work and capabilities which were not there with us. And if, with the needs of the customer, with the evolution of customer, with the digitization, we need to be present where the customers are. And therefore, to that extent, from a, uh, from a currency which they own and the, we being the custodian of that currency, we have also evolved with our capabilities to manage the expectation of the customers. So, uh, loyalty as a concept needs to be entrenched. And let's look at um, what are the key ethos, or uh, if I had to break it down, to say what is the DNA of a loyalty is made in the three core uh, components. Uh, clarity on loyalty objectives, business and customer wise. So for any brand which is trying to do this, they need to be clear about what the business wants and what the customer wants. Total commitment, including the leadership towards the loyalty as element. And often loyalty program is, running a loyalty program is delegated to a third party or a junior most person in the organization within the marketing department. And if you look at CMOs, their care is how many of them actually feature loyalty as a key component in their care is very few. And therefore, where I come from is that total commitment, including leadership. And, and when we saw this as an opportunity, we carved it out as a separate business to run it to because it requires dedicated effort. Clarity on the loyalty measure of success and regular reporting of KPIs. We spoke about how the, the KPIs have to be measured and, and one needs to be very clear as to what is driving loyalty and what, what do you mean by it? And especially in, a, in our system, when we are dealing with multiple partners, what is their business objective? So our, our discussion with our partners is largely, what is the business objective? How can we help? How can the customer base help? And how do we measure that it is delivering what you're actually looking for? And therefore, uh, it is sort of a balancing act. It's good for business but also meaningful for consumers. Brands and business often dwell for a significant amount of time on how they can create the utmost value to their customers to cement their proposition in their life cycle. And it's often one way thinking that this is what we can do. Never to think, and, and, I, have, I, and I have struggled with a lot of brands where people don't think from the customer's point of view as to what is important to them and what is relevant to them. And it is essential to balance out the business objective with product and services elements, which are relevant to consumers to create value buckets and, and which are both good for business and at the same time meaningful for consumers. Let me explain this uh, concept. If you look at it from a behavioral loyalty, which reflects the actual brand specific product and services, uh, the number of purchases within a specific period of time. Uh, and the, uh, uh, from a business objective perspective, you require some sort of influence on switching. So you need some barrier for customers to switch. Uh, I have switched brands on at least one occasion to get more benefit from one loyalty program to the other. Now, how do you, how do you create a structure in which this makes, uh, this makes it uh, appealing towards the business objective? Modeling impulse purchases, uh, I have uh, a need to travel somewhere and there is a special offer being given. A special offer is not necessarily a discount, but a double miles or something else or some extra uh, uh, upgrade thrown in and that becomes an impulse purchase. Uh, competitive force, what are, the, uh, what are the different product and services in your domain trying to do? And then more importantly, the element as to how which cohort of the customers are moving up the value chain for buying more frequently and how much share of your the wallet have you been able to capture, which is around inciting customers to spend more. Now, this is all about the business objective. But if you look at how do we marry that with meaningfulness to the customer, we're looking at benefits the program benefits are the benefits meaningful are the benefits relevant to the customer and different customers are in different members are in different stages of life so how will you ensure that the program benefits are relevant and meaningful as well the value uh, a significant amount of value is uh, coming purely from the cash equation 
but the way we define value and we call in, in our currency we measure the way we measure it is the utility value and and the the utility value of the currency and there is a perceived value of the currency and and the real value is the the counting value and how you actually manage that and therefore the program uh, creates an influence on the brand loyalty because the customer then finds a way to create an uh, uh, emotive and internal and deliberate the 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 whole aspect around uh, around this and therefore uh, finding the right balance uh, will leave you in the valuable zone now uh, at intermise we have followed these five principles at each stage of our journey and we continuously keep doing so we are not saying we are the best out there uh, what we are saying is we we again look at every quarter to look at okay what can we do more what can we do what can we do to improve what are different ways in which we can serve the customers better and therefore uh, this the simple aspect around this is do justice to the value of data exchange at the end of the day the customer is giving you data and you need to uh, you need to uh, make sure you have proper mechanism to store it and 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 create value out of it and leverage it in the trust. It's the, it's the epicenter of any loyalty program is the data. Uh, to give you an example, for each member, we have close to around 1,200 different data points which are stitched together. Uh, a lot of companies have first party, and we have not, I'm not even referring to what the customers are doing in outside world in social media. This is first party data all data given to us to our brand if you're able to stitch this data together to create a view of your customer that itself is gold mine and i have seen a lot of brands actually struggle with that keep the program simple keep rewards and benefits valuable and measure that value create a, a, a utility value of the rewards and the recognition and Keep tracking it every month, every week to see whether it is in the same range or no. Uh, do test it out by talking to the customers as well. Keep the goals attainable. Uh, and that is where the, the essence lies. Uh, where for me as or for you, uh, anybody as a customer, uh, you can only uh, work with the goal science and the theory behind it as long as the goal is within the striking distance. It's attainable. If you set some target which is non-attainable, then it's not going to uh, attract. And personalize, personalize, personalize everything members to emotionally connect. Because emotional interaction must be greater than the transactional reward. And, and we have spent a lot of time and effort and we still not have cracked it. A lot of areas are still yet to be personalized and we are still working towards creating a lot more personal engagement for members. The whole concept of segment equals to one is still work in progress uh, a lot of compute power is required from from a analytics purpose to understand the unique behavior of a customer and make that segment of one possible so there is there is a lot more to be done in this area and we continuously keep making progress around it what we have done we have done things differently um, Quite successfully, if I may say so, uh, at Intermise is that we started off as a company running loyalty programs, which eventually evolved into running a business by itself. And how did we do this? We studied consumer behavior, demands, created member lifestyle approaches, different personas, different segments, different cohorts, brought stitched the data together to identify the behavior, identifying the value proposition, aligning them to customers' needs, uh, adapted the principles of marketing to suit our business model, shifted the loyalty sentiments of consumer from specific brand to the currency, in our case, intermiles. And, and if, I, if, I, if I actually uh, indulge on this, the reason for this is largely very simple. In, in, the, in the context last year when Jet wasn't there, uh, members were still engaged, members were still uh, calling us and interacting with us largely because the currency was still bankless and they would want to ensure that the currency is safe and the trust has been there 
uh, we went back to members saying that don't worry even if the airline is not there we're going to be there we will honor your uh, miles and we are probably the only company in the world which has survived without an airline it has never happened in the aviation world a loyalty program or a fixed number program has tied with the airline but we have set a new record a new way of doing business and this is becoming uh, critical in the covid uh, pandemic area if you see what has happened in united or delta or or american airlines at this point of time they have basically structured billion dollars deals with backing from the us government to stake ties to merge their entire program then to borrow 3 to 4 billion dollars to survive this entire pandemic and therefore this is the most valuable asset which is always going to be there for any organization because it is it is looked at differently by by the market they don't look at it uh, as an airline asset anymore and therefore for our for our journey the the whole purpose was largely aligning the brand towards the new customer value proposition the customer value proposition is you have created a, a ubiquitous currency of engagement for rewarding members when they transact with us you can book any airline book any hotel uh, take any particular card and interact and earn miles and for for this we have not done this once but twice but we have been doing this for 25 years and the universal truth which has remained uh, with us is that our members love to earn miles uh, in 2019 which is the most disruptive year we have seen so far in our in, in, in our history in our corporate history we managed 35 billion miles at a given point of time and this is a real case study which is which is which is there today why it has been possible is because of our core goal the core goal has been fulfilling aspiration by creating memorable and rewarding experience at the end of the day one side of the business is liability management this is the liability which we have on our books where we manage this liability to ensure we fulfill the aspiration until the liability is completely managed and extinguished we are not uh, uh, we are we, we are not uh, off the hooks and therefore the obligation is very much there and to to structure this business essentially uh, from a from a business lens perspective it is a program across lifestyle verticals so we follow the customer where whatever he is doing and have created hooks to ensure there are ways in which we can engage with the customer whether it's an e-commerce transaction hotel dining insurance payments experiences we have set up and created platforms to engage with those customers across categories so if we look at the loyalty landscape in india we are the only differentiated diversified digitally enabled customer engagement loyalty program so that sounds a little hurtful but the reality is that's where that's where it is if you actually look at it the the in the travel segment in the financial segment or in the lifestyle or retail segment we cover all aspect of it even the utilities including the fuel and therefore uh there are there are other programs which are there which are multi party format etc but not there's not there's only one program which spans across these three verticals and therefore from a customers uh of our members lifestyle perspective we cover each and every aspect of it and the way we actually uh, uh run this is uh, or we have evolved this is largely the business model has evolved over the last so many uh, months or so on one side as a members the other side is uh, partners which are redemption partners or accrual partners a business partner can be both accrual and redemption partners or he could be just a redemption partner or could be an accrual partners and our objective is to manage this entire relationship uh, and ensure members have seamless flow of data coming in to be able to get their value now how we have solved this some of these problems uh, to ensure that it is top of the mind for members is by creating captive platforms by creating and owning the funnel in each of these categories and ensuring that we are able to control the content and the supply uh, user experience create a differentiated cvp uh, have the data uh, flow the data use the data to trigger 
there are AI models at the back end which uh, uh, which analyze this data and control the entire revenue funnel. Therefore, if we actually look at it in this entire uh, ecosystem, uh, the role of loyalty is to make the brand experience better. Reward and recognition together translate to the emotional side of the people. Hence, if you have to engage with your customers, it has to be a holistic approach. The shift towards a program to retain customers' loyalty by providing motivating, uh, by providing motivation to uh, the progress in goal three. We have to make sure it is attainable to make sure the currency is stable because that's what gives control back to the customer. At the end of the day, it is customers who are in control of it, not the other way around. All you can do is by creating this program, influence their behavior in some way or the other, and the, the net result of it is what you see as the loyalty. In effect, it is the customer engagement which uh, drives the customer loyalty, and therefore, at the end of it, it's all about the experience which you to the customer at, at each touch point. I think with that, uh, uh, let me take a pause and go through some of the questions which have been there and try and see if the questions have been addressed or we can, we can cover those uh, as you go along. Thank you, Manish. Uh, Manish, we have got a lot of questions from the students. So I'll just re go through them. I've consolidated them in the interest of time, and I'll just go through them one by one. Um, the first question is the impact of COVID on customer loyalty in India, and how Intermal is coping with uh, the COVID impact on travel. Yeah, good question. I must say. Um, so the the way the customer loyalty impact is there, and especially I will refer to. Uh, the travel and hospitality industry, which is impacted worldwide across. Uh, the, the, uh, it's not just about the loyalty, but it's about the, the travel and hospitality segment per se. Uh, the need for travel has uh, taken a different shape altogether. And how it will evolve going forward is something which we will we'll still have to see we are still in the pandemic uh, at this point of time my firm belief is that uh, come what may uh, they, the travel will be subdued in the initial period with domestic travel international will take uh, uh, will take some time to uh, develop purely because uh, the customers don't have the confidence they need they need to see uh, that traveling is safe and if you just to look back what happened in 9-11 period, uh, that was an event which was isolated in the US where you had uh, customers um, had this fear of travel. Uh, this fear of travel is going to be there, fear of going out, fear of catching the virus is, is there. Now, this will take time once either there is a vaccine or the virus becomes weaker uh, as you go along. So until that happens, travel will be subdued. It will take time for us to recover to the 2019 level and it could take a couple of years to uh, or probably more than that. Uh, I don't get into those those details as to when it will happen. I think what is important is what do we do to uh, restore the confidence of the customers and it is here the collaborative approach with which the entire uh, uh, ecosystem whether it is airport operators, airlines, hotels, hospitality partners, uh, all have to come together to create and restore confidence with consumers around the fact that uh, it is safe for travel. Now, safety is something which uh, airlines will do their best. The regulations have been created, but at the end of the day, it is for us to make sure we follow the guidelines. Uh, See, let's, let's understand the virus is going to be there for some time and the virus will be there uh, for foreseeable future. Now, how are we going to take uh, precautions to ensure we are able to uh, prevent this uh, and, and not only prevent this, but also uh, prevent ourselves and family by taking precautions. Now, what in what way or shape these precautions are being carried out in places like airports or uh, doing the boarding uh, and therefore the more such uh, 
precautions are seen, the confidence will build up. It's not going to happen. So overnight, it will take time. The, the absolutely essential travel is where things will be uh, uh, coming back to normalcy or so-called normalcy, if I say so. It is going to take time. And uh, until that happens, uh, we just have to wait it out. There is nothing else which can be. The need for travel, uh, once this pandemic is over and 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 pandemic sure will be over at some point of time the need for trial will be there i don't think the uh, uh, some of the people who have talked about it that people are not going to travel no that's not going to happen people will travel yes it is a pause it is only need based travel major travel i want to go on vacation uh, with my family it's bound to happen. It will take time. It will take a couple of years for us to get back into the ship. Sure, thank you, Manish. Uh, does that answer yeah. the question? Yes. So uh, uh, the next question is now that more, most customers have gone online, what are the new ways to ensure customer engagement with them? Yes. So I think, uh, as I had explained earlier, our uh, our brand is largely travel centric brand, but we had built capabilities to uh, with 150 odd partnerships to look at engagement across multiple uh, uh, domain. So while travel and hospitality was the key driver, uh, payments and other lifestyle categories, uh, uh, shopping, uh, online shopping, insurance, these are uh, the upcoming sectors where the engagement has happened. More importantly, we have also done in the last three, four months, uh, brainstormed and come up with ideas which some of it will be rolled out over the next uh, 32 weeks. So there are some new exciting projects which we are working on uh, to engage with customers uh, and with some partners who want to see value in a different way. So digital consumption has increased of content and therefore we have partnered with uh, online shop has been high payment, digital payment has increased. So therefore we have different products to reward customers by using the digital wallets and digital payment. So those are the areas we have, uh, we have uh, evolved. Plus, uh, in the process, what we have launched, and we, we just, as I said, 19th November was the date on which we launched the Intermiles, and our app was launched on the uh, first week of uh, March. So, uh, over the last three months or so, we quickly pivoted certain capabilities in our system to interact with members. So, we started rewarding members for staying home. Uh, we will be, uh, in the next version of the app, talking about several new initiatives around engaging with members on games, uh, on quizzes, as well as on health areas. Because that is top of the mind. So follow, follow where you are. Uh, uh, Manish, the next question is, uh, given airways generally reports, gen airlines generally report losses, how does the industry manage to have a marketing budget? Sorry, I think I, I lost the Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello? Uh, yeah, so how does the industry have a marketing budget? If I, yes. if I understand, that was your question. So I think, yes. uh, 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 as I said earlier, large chunk of the marketing budget is in a lot of airlines still very clearly defined towards the frequent fire program and frequent fire program if carved out and run is a profitable business unlike uh, the cost that they have in the aviation business uh, and we have proven that particular model uh, the value is there you need to create the right structure and framework in which you can run it as a profitable business and not as a cost center and which is why uh, not many airlines have done it uh, very few have been able to crack it and i was fortunate enough to be part of the journey to create this 
uh, transition from from the airline uh, department or a business unit to a separate company and to run it and effectively manage it and add value to the shareholders. Uh, and it is uh, and it is being done now by a lot of uh, a lot of uh, airlines across the world uh, purely because if you if you structure it right it is not a cost center it is a big revenue driver provided you measure and appropriately structure it so um, the next question is uh, what challenges do you so I think uh, I would like to explain this in in the context uh, we started off as a frequent flyer program and our journey just began in um, 2014 uh, where we were still a frequent flyer program but migrating towards expanding to non-air business it was always sitting with the partner to add value uh, as to what they see value. Uh, the members who engage with us and members who are part of the program have been there for many years. And with uh, when the mileage balance is close to 30 billion plus, there is a significant amount of liability which we carry and, and we need to protect that and engage with the members appropriately. <laughs> So uh, it was value-based relationship with our partners. Uh, the transition from jet privilege to enterprise, as I said earlier, was largely to uh, represent the true customer value proposition. Um, members who were redeeming miles or who were booking travel with us uh, on jetprivilege.com or and traveling Air Asia or anybody uh, were in confused as to is this the same. So representing the new brand value was relevant that you can now earn miles when you book with us on across any airline in the world and uh, redeem it for any airline in the world uh, or for any hotels on our platform. So Intermiles, the, no, the name Intermiles was designed and after a lot of research with the help of Interbrandy Agency to understand uh, what customers are actually looking for. And therefore, uh, it represents the true spirit in which the program was being run. And the ubiquitous nature, the interchangeability of the points, and miles being the travel-centric nature of our business uh, is where uh, that happened. Now, why travel is largely because that's a legacy, but also travel is the most aspirational reward which across the world you will see. The most involved loyalty programs are the ones which are anchored in travel space uh, per se. So that's where uh, our strategy was. Convincing uh, uh, program partners was uh, fairly, uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say easy, but discussions with them to understand their business requirement and how we can work together to solve some of this. Because at the end of the day, the customer spends drive value back to our partners as well. So, uh, Nanish, the next question is, what do different value proposition did you offer your members during the rebranding exercise? So, um, two things. One, um, mileage, uh, intermiles will not uh, uh, expire as long as the members are active. So, there's no expiry. Number two, the reward is still available at the same value what was available in some cases less uh, um, when the members were interacting with check privilege. Number three, all their miles. Uh, earlier, the tier retention was largely the number of times you fly a jet or jet partner airlines, and therefore you would become a platinum, gold, or silver member appropriately. With intermiles, irrespective of what you do, it doesn't matter total number of miles collected in in a period will determine whether the member is uh, silver gold platinum or red tier status so that's how the differentiation was done and the benefits to different members were were different 
and given the fact that we we built the commerce capability for booking flight and hotel on our platform uh, the currency was available for members to not only earn but also use so uh, manish and next question is uh, with almost every company introducing some sort of loyalty program today how does intermiles differentiate yeah i think it's a very uh, important question see uh, i firmly believe uh, that uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for one company to solve the problem on its own because you need to solve for uh, awards being meaningful number one attainability uh, number two uh, fungibility because fungibility gives control back to the customer now i have seen organizations struggle purely because of corporate objective is it's a cost budget spend less uh, this is the amount of money i can do so easiest is give a 500 rupee gift voucher or 100 rupee gift voucher but that's not loyalty and creating and participating in a coalition format to drive the benefits to bring because you can't get all your customers loyal you need to look at your cohorts and analyze customers who will fit as i mentioned earlier different ways in which you can structure your program uh, and uh, intermiles as a proposition fits to certain set of customers and and uh, and we spoke about earlier i can try and explain this concept in tmta model uh, i have heard this model in, in the past from different people uh, and it is around the time money trust age equation which which defines the whole thing um we actually appeal to people who have less time more money india per se uh, as a country if you look at it we have 35 million household uh, in india one uh, and roughly 25 30 or a little more in india two and then rest of the uh, india two india three the the india one contributes to 1.5 trillion dollars of the economy which is almost 50% so the value creation zone is limited to india one which is largely the same audience which is paying your taxes etc etc so the question then largely comes is the spending power is with them and if you if the spending power is in which means that they have less time so you have to solve for time which essentially means the program has to add value have to save time give convenience to the customers and reward them for spending the other half of the come uh, india which is they their average income is less they have more time and therefore they use their time to make money and they have plenty of free time available uh, in that context a program or a proposition will not attract because what they are looking for is something else which the program will we at least our proposition will not be able to cater therefore we focus is in in the india one stack itself and we firmly believe over the next many years as digitization as uh, economic prosperity increases the this market will keep on in keep on increasing uh, manish what metrics do you use to measure customer loyalty Oh, we have uh, uh, several areas, and we keep evolving ourselves. Uh, in fact, uh, just uh, uh, last month, we created a new North Star metric framework for ourselves uh, because we have divided the organization into uh, three broad areas. Uh, the uh, in some cases, it is the average number of transactions per member, which is the North Star metric. uh in some cases it is the penetration uh, uh which is the element the whole uh, uh structure is focused around the fact that the the true measure of engagement is uh on areas like are your members uh, uh, frequently engaging with with intermiles uh, are your members uh spending x amount uh and therefore because most of our uh, reward program is structured around if you spend x you get y uh so 
what is the quantum of mice they're able to collect if wallet share we have been able to capture uh, from our members and therefore we've been able to reward them and number three is to how often are they able to use their reward so there are different ways in which we look at it uh, but uh, we have also evolved our thinking process in measuring it because as a business as the business is evolving different stages of the business but like i said our business is with partners so with partners we agree on what the value they see whether it is spends per card spends per customers uh, if that is the metric they want to look at then we need to ensure that we deliver on those uh, kpis uh, manish do uh, customers display a higher loyalty in certain segments in comparison to others if so why does that tend to happen so yes uh, uh, intermiles is a fairly uh, new brand uh, and we have to make members aware of the new brand uh, as the awareness increases we will see some of those uh, things but uh, to answer your question um, the uh, broad verticals as i said earlier was the travel including air and hotel uh, financial services are the key drivers uh, the in the in the pandemic uh, phase we have seen a dip in the customer interaction but we have also seen transactions coming back uh, on certain categories like uh, uh, retail online shopping commerce uh, and also uh, the the health and insurance uh, spends uh, and we have seen a significant step back in in the spending uh, and and that's where currently uh, uh, it is now what will drive going forward uh, i think uh, for foreseeable future it will be digitally enabled spends and digital consumption which will drive it and therefore our effort will be to ensure to follow what the customers are looking for and and they be present in their customer journey in their consultation set and create opportunities and partnership model to ensure they get rewarded and we are able to fulfill their aspiration yes uh, redemption uh, is a key element and redemption for travel is not going to be there it is going to be need based but uh, uh, people are going to save save this currency and come back whenever the travel is back because i'm sure after a certain period of time everybody all of us are going to be uh, needing some sort of a break so uh, whether it is staycation or going out in in uh, somewhere uh, road trips etc are the ones which will fulfill and we are structuring some of the capabilities and partnership in those directions okay uh, manish can big data be what role does big data play in uh, increasing customer loyalty and uh, uh, does it help to uh, gain significant insights on consumer behavior that will lead to higher retention uh yes and i would like to caution everybody from using big data i mean this is a very abused term uh, in the industry but uh, if i have to uh, indulge on this subject uh, the way i would like to say that data is the most crucial element and uh, data is the new fuel i think we all know about it it's been talked enough uh they are data colonization happening by large companies uh and and uh there are different uh, geopolitical consideration happening around data and therefore data becomes the core of any business going forward how do you protect and enrich the data is going to be there data regulations are also going to be increasing in terms of what data you can share what cannot share the customer what information you can collect and not collect and the declaration of that and creating a chart for customers to opt in so uh, data plays a very important part but data also lies in silos in different transaction systems what needs to be done is to collect this data and and stitch this data and create flows of this data so we started this journey almost uh, four years back and i can tell you we have still not solved a lot of problems uh, we still haven't got the social data our mobile app just got launched so we are integrating right now the mobile data 
uh, into our uh, data lake and creating different analysis and understanding of the customer. So data is going to be important and we have not even touched the what is there in 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 uh, in the social media domain we're not even scraping or uh, uh, looking at what customers are saying our members are saying because we've not even connected that and that's where the uh, the big data element is because the stream of data which flows yeah. in you need to have hello sorry yeah you're saying something yeah manisha not audible uh, am i audible now Sorry, you're not audible in the middle. Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay, so what, what I was trying to say is that uh, data plays a very important role. You need to build data pipeline and uh, create capabilities to uh, to structure it. So our data uh, data analytics team, uh, there is a data engineering team which looks at bringing uh, different pieces of data from different systems and solving it and ensuring the data is stored properly. Uh, and then the, the data science teams looks at different models to analyze and uh, we use uh, uh, different capabilities to test the model to understand the behavior uh, we're still solving for the first element as to get the right customer uh, but uh, data also helps in not only just the segmentation but also the right communication approach to how to ensure you are relevant uh, as I said, we just started getting the mobile data uh, into our data lake, and that is going to be the next phase of our evolution in terms of how we uh, make sure we go closer to our goal of creating a segment equals to one. And the third piece in this in this is the team which manages the business inside and uh, and driving insight out of the data. Which is largely around storytelling. What the data is. What what is the underlying data telling us? Manisha, well, while people yeah. give a lot of their personal information about when they are signing in for a loyalty program, how do you make sure? I'm so sorry, but how do you make sure uh, their privacy concerns are met? So, as a company, we follow GDPR guidelines. Uh, and uh, we have at the back end enabled systems capabilities to ensure we the data is uh, stored uh, and audited. We do uh, several audits of our systems uh, when somebody comes uh, uh, and signs up. There are clear uh, opt-in uh, options are available. One can opt out of uh, the capabilities which will not track him going forward. So uh, giving choice to the customer and if somebody wants their data to be deleted, unfortunately uh, for us, uh, deleting the data would mean you're no longer a member because he will not be able to serve, uh, serve you as, uh, as a member. Uh, the whole business model is around that. We haven't seen uh, any of those cases except for a few cases which happened in the okay. European market where members from European region uh, wanted to, uh, and those are in single digits. So, uh, but the choice will be to the members. Hello, Manish, the next question is, uh, while applying for, why, how do you customize your loyalty program to be relevant to diverse customers? Sorry, I, I didn't get also that. Also, does what, too much I... personalization make the loyalty? Uh, yeah, I'll come again. So, uh, the question asked is, uh, how, while applying for loyalty cards, uh, Manish, I'll just send the questions to Trishna. She can just take it. I'm so sorry, my daughter is crying. I know, I know, Simone. I know you have to yeah. attend to her. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll send the questions I, to I feel, I feel guilty. I feel guilty for... Uh, for doing this, but uh, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Yeah, so Shai, can you just go ahead with the next remaining question? Uh, sure. Uh, so the question Simon asked was, uh, since we have to customize loyalty program for a larger audience, how do we understand how much should we customize? Because over customization is also not good. 
I believe that was the essence of the question. Question. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, uh, as I said, you will have to do some sort of cluster analysis. You have to create cohorts and understand which segment of the customers uh, you can actually want to offer what sort of a program. And uh, 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 this is where this is where the um, uh, I often get asked as to, but this goes against the segment of one. I think the segment of one is a classical thought process which is there from a communication perspective. It's largely from the communication. I mean, if you go back to the history of the way it has been done is when you're trying to communicate, you send same mailer, same uh, communication to everybody or you communicate to you individually. And some people thought it is personalization. Yes, personalization. but your behavior shares is different from uh, Mansi's behavior, from Manisha's behavior, from Simon's behavior. So the question is, what is uniquely appealing to Simon? How do we understand that? Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, that makes it uh, compelling to create a communication piece or to, to induce the relevant behavior. Now, uh, the, the other thought is also that there are people like Simon, like uh, Shreya, like Mansi, who would be there and they will form a cohort. And therefore, analyzing data would also mean that, okay, there are 100,000 people like Mansi and therefore that becomes a cohort. And therefore, in that segment, uh, you can customize the program, which is relevant because what what is liked by you would be liked by somebody else in the same. The behavior is the, uh, the same. So that's how you start to analyze and look at uh, the the different cohorts and start to customize it. You really can't go down to customizing the program. I mean, in future, I would love to be part of that journey where I can build such a thing. But uh, and and it is and it is. I'm sure at some point of time, technology will enable that. But uh, uh, cohort is the creating different segments and creating different proposition for those segments is the way we look at solving for this puzzle right now. Uh, a quick follow-up, Manish. What do you think should be the size of the cohort? Uh, when you're saying that we need to create a cohort, what, what is ideally a size of the cohort? I think it's uh, entirely dependent on from business to business. I mean, I have seen people run a loyalty program for 100,000 customers. So the question is, what is economically feasible? Uh, you have to test that particular cohort. Uh, question is would you run a cohort for just 10 people if it is economically feasible to deliver uh, something which is specially unique uh, for those 10 people sure by by all means uh, one can one can look at it so it is it's not something which is uh, standard uh, depending on the number of customers the different types of services and the industry this number would change so uh, my recommendation would be to look at the economically feasible uh, because at the end of the day, please look at it this way. You're promising something to the customer. You have to deliver. Uh, and either you will spend too much to deliver or you promise too much and under deliver. So in my, in my, in my theory, I would like to deliver everything what we have been promised to the customers and, and never find a way to under deliver. Now, uh, Economically and and technologically, whatever is feasible, one should look at it. And depending on that uh, approach, we should we should find a way to and and there are ways to solve this. Sure, Manish. Uh, moving on to the next question: What proportion of marketing spend is allocated to maintaining the customer base as compared to acquiring new customers? So, um, good question. And if I have to step back and analyze this from an Indian environment perspective right now, uh, a lot of companies are in growth phase. And in growth phase, uh, a large, uh, a lot of companies are funded by VCs. They are currently using the money to acquire customers. Uh, and it's, as I said earlier, it's a data colonization. It's a race to acquire large customer base not keeping in mind uh, what is exciting or is not exciting or the right customer etc and therefore we have seen in the last few years quotes of cashbacks as the medium and in some way people are referring that as a, as a true loyalty 
uh, I think the dust is going to settle down now. Or it has, uh, which is my interaction with you, what I have seen. And the way I would look at it is um, uh, brands and companies will start to focus on optimizing this and the needle is going to shift towards finding ways to retain the customers and the marketing budget will start to tilt towards uh, running and managing and, and most optimal program or participating in any other program which will deliver to their those objectives because uh, uh, customer acquisition cost will have to come down because a lot of businesses are the CAC is just sustainable. We have to you have to look at the lifetime value of the customer to understand uh, from that perspective and, and the growth marketing principles have driven it into an area where sometimes it's just not feasible. The customer just doesn't come back and, and takes away the discount and you've given you've, you've given the discount to acquire the new customer uh, versus doing the discount to get the next transaction. Uh, so the lifetime value just goes for a toss. All right. Uh, moving on to the next question. How did you manage to keep your company afloat after Jet Airways? How have you managed to make consumers understand that Jet Airways and Intermiles are separate entities? And do you still face this issue? So yes, it was a challenge in 2019, April 17th, when the, when Jet shut operations, uh, there was uh, concern. We had worked a, a more cohesive uh, communication plan, uh, sending uh, communication, not just below the line, but also in the media, press release, different interviews. Uh, uh, yet, uh, not everybody had understood the difference between that we are a separate company. Uh, we did an ad campaign uh, way back in May, June, July period to talk about why JP Miles are still relevant and powerful and, and, and the reason for it. And, and we are a separate company and that our business is a continuum. Uh, for every member, so we were uh, we were able to communicate that. Uh, now, not so much because we did uh, when we in November when we did the rebranding, uh, it we again reached out. So continuous reaching out to the members to explain. Now everybody understands, and plus the fact that uh, a lot of uh, media coverage has happened uh, from all sides to ensure that. Uh, to bring to the point that Intermiles is your subject religion is different from Jet. And the fact that uh, we have been fulfilling the member's obligation and members are still engaged is a testament to, so it, it took time, but uh, those concerns have certainly been addressed and no longer anymore. That's great, Manish. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, people usually get irritated due to spamming of messages in their inbox after taking a loyalty program. How do you optimize your email marketing in this case? So we have a governance mechanism which uh, our marketing team follows, um, uh, which is uh, uh, marketing and promotional mailers. There is a cap. Beyond that, nobody will get more than three times a week. Uh, and that is different from trigger mailer. The trigger is you have done a transaction and you need to be informed about the particular transaction or your book made a booking, the email has, the booking has to be emailed or ticketing has to be done. So those are not covered as part of this uh, uh, compliance framework. So, uh, and, and this, this governance, communication governance framework works uh, at multiple levels in terms of send time optimization at what time of the day we should be communicating whether it's email, SMS or notification or for that matter what time, uh, how many times a week and how many times a month, different people, different. So we have a, a, a governance framework which applies, to, which, which, is, which is applied before the communication is sent out. Uh, the, the whole intention is um, uh, don't treat member as a record, as a potential, just a customer, but as a person. And like you and I will get affected with too many emails and notification, uh, apply that empathy towards the member to create a, a mechanics in which make the communication relevant, make the communication targeted. And there are ways to do it. I mean, 
uh, there are tools to analyze to see are you the right audience for this customer? How likely are you going to respond to this? And therefore, should I be sending it to 10,000 people or 100,000 people? And if the communication is relevant to only 10,000 people, then no need to send to the rest 90,000 people. That, that clears it out. Uh, Manish, that is all the questions that we have. If you do not mind, I would like the participants to now, if they wish and have more questions, to unmute themselves and come forward uh, before we finally end the meeting. So sure, do no we problem. Have any questions? Yeah, uh, do we have just any a time check? I have about 10, 10 minutes more. Sure, Manish. We'll, we'll try to optimize it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Manish. It was a wonderful session. Uh, my question is that so I read somewhere that to unlock the full potential of loyalty points, uh, we need to provide liquidity, especially in the B2B uh, loyalty market. So, what are your views on points back securities or uh, points back currencies? And is it something that we need to, uh, is it the way that we need to go forward to? Sorry, I didn't get your question properly. Uh, in B2B sector, liquidity, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, so basically, uh, for example, like the credit card companies buy uh, air miles from uh, the, the airlines, right? Uh, as a part of their credit card portfolio. And mm -hmm. uh, like given in this pandemic, their, uh, uh, their risk for the portfolio will take a hit. So if, if there's a, some company which can take that risk or is there a liquidity in the market where the B2B players can sell these points? Okay, got it. Uh, so my question so I think, is on those lines. Yeah, so I think, uh, as I said earlier, uh, this is about a liability management aspect of the business. And now, um, uh, you need to ensure your liabilities are adequately funded to fulfill those. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, the liquidity management uh, is related to that. Are your points funded? Uh, and if it is not, then you are in trouble. But if your points are funded and you have made provisions and you have uh, created uh, structures in which you will be able to fulfill the obligation, uh, that is crux because that ultimately determines the trust from the member side. So okay. whatever structure, whatever, whether it's B2B, B2C, the core is largely as to how you have created the financial model uh, to ensure you are able to survive not only this downturn, but like in our case, when ha what, what happened in the case of Jack, we were able to quickly procure tickets from outside and offer to the members. And therefore, what that meant is the financial man model, financially, we were strong enough to fulfill our obligation. So the liquidity is required to fulfill the obligation, which is at the end of the day, which I said earlier, uh, that it is about the liability management. The liability is on your books, and we, there is an accounting policy which which is which is governing this, and therefore uh, the the business has to be run with proper governance mechanism. Right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Manish. Manish, in the interest of time, we would uh, not be able to take more questions. Uh, we would love a closing statement from your side and uh, your overall experience at IAM Calcutta webinar. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't see any of you other than my screen looks all names and some uh, alphabet letters. So, uh, I can only say uh, thank you for inviting me. It has been an uh, absolute uh, honor and pleasure to interact and share some of the insights with you. I wish all of you the very best uh, in your career, in whatever you are pursuing. Uh, I know these are uh, tough times. Uh, it will uh, bring the best out of you. Uh, I have seen that uh, there are many, many situations which have happened. So uh, stay positive. Stay focused uh, and uh, get creative and innovative in the ways uh, you want to make your career. And I will, I will only say uh, that uh, uh, this time shall not last long. It will, it will come out, and we'll all come out stronger because every crisis, every crisis brings the best out of you, and it gives an opportunity for you all to rethink, innovate, reimagine. Uh, the way the business is done. So uh, with that note, uh, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for inviting me. It was a great uh, uh, session and interesting uh, uh, questions as well.
thank you so much manish it was a pleasure having you and the closing talk was very motivating we are also looking forward to challenging our limits and going beyond our own beyond to come out of this pandemic thank you so much it was great having you on board thank you all the best everyone thank you thank you thank you manish